Let me start. So before starting, let me briefly introduce a speaker, Dr. Yuto Minami from Osaka University. He received a PhD from Tokyo University at 2016. After that, he experienced a postdoctoral researcher at High Energy Accelerator Research Organization, KIKE, until 2020. Since 2020, he has been a specially appointed assistant professor of Osaka University. He is energetically doing researches on searching for beyond the standard model signatures in the cosmic microwave background. Today, he's going to talk about Lightbird, a future satellite mission on CNB polarization. Uh, please start, Dr. Minami. Okay, yes, yeah, thank you for the introduction and thank you all for inviting me to this seminar. Yeah, let me start. So before that, yeah, maybe three months ago or so, yeah, we light about collaboration team uh, publish uh, published or release a new paper on the light bulb project so it's about uh, it's with about 155 pages so we put many information on light bulb so if you want any detailed information please see uh, the paper let me start so yeah we People searched for new physics with, incre with increasing energy on the ground. Uh, for example, LSC Atlas experiment searched for new physics in TeV or 10 TeV scale with the proton-proton collision. However, the, for example, GAT scale, Grand Unified Theory scale, is about 10 to 16 GeV or so. So yeah, just now we don't have any way to reach that energy scale with collider. So how can we access such very high energy? Uh, our idea is to use the universe. So yeah, inflation is a physics of the high energy scale. Inflation is exponential expansion of our universe in the early time. We hope to explore God scale physics. So yeah, ex the expansion was created by the uh, one scalar field. In such case, uh, the potential energy scale is about 10 to 16 GeV. It's similar to God scale. Here, the parameter R means the tensor to scalar ratio, which is the power spectrum ratio of the tensor type perturbation to scalar type perturbation. Uh, they are from the, this uh, metric. So this is a tensor type, uh, sorry, scalar type perturbation, which multiplies the uh, metric in overall. And this H means the uh, tensor type uh, perturbation. And this scalar type perturbation create density fluctuation in this in space. And this tensor type perturbation create primordial gravitational waves. So yeah, let me talk about the background of inflation. So inflation can solve some problems in Big Bang cosmology. One is flatness problem. The present universe curvature is unusually flat. The observed density parameter is very close to unity. If the density has been larger, the universe should contract or should have contracted. It, was, uh, it is called big crunch. If the density had been smaller, the universe would have expanded faster to prevent the formation of galaxies, including our galaxies. So inflation can make any initial curvature to flat, so inflation is expected to solve this problem. Another problem is horizon problem. Even without causality, CMP temperature is similar in any sky 
uh, direction. So inflation can expand small universe where all sky region have causality. So after the inflation, they can have causality, even though they are very uh, far away places. And so, so how can inflation create uh, gravitational waves? So inflation expands the space by 10 to 26 times in 10 to minus 36 seconds. During that, if there is a spatial fluctuation uh, from the quantum fluctuation, that can be expanded uh, by inflation and the uh, uh, fluctuation become a large scale fluctu fluctuation. And this becomes uh, primordial gravitational waves. So about gravitational waves, uh, LIGO made a first observation of gravi gravitational wave in 2015. This is the event of the gravitational wave. So yeah, uh, as time uh, propagate, uh, the frequency becomes higher. Yeah. This is a black hole merger event, whose uh, wavelength is 10 to 6 meter. Then how about the primordial gravitational waves? Uh, typically, its uh, wavelength is 10 to 24 uh, meter, so extre extremely uh, higher than that of black hole merger or neutron star merger. And this uh, small wavelength uh, gravitational waves can be observed uh, interferometer on the ground or interferometer in the space. However, primordial gravitational waves cannot be detected by interferometer. Uh, interferometer. And meet uh, wavelength region, uh, such uh, gravitational waves can be uh, detected by pulsar timing of array. Yeah, anyway, uh, we need to use cosmic microwave background to observe such large wavelengths gravitational waves. We target the 10 billion light year scale of gravitational waves. This is a, a past expected power spectrum of primordial gravitational waves uh, in frequency, uh, in wave number. So, so the power is, power has its peak in very low frequency region, about 10 to minus 18 hertz. And yeah, in higher frequencies, uh, where part of the timing array interferometer can detect, there is no large uh, power. So we need to use cosmic microwave background to detect this uh, primordial gravitational wave. So how to measure such primordial gravitational waves with cosmic microwave background? If there is a fluctuation in the space, yeah, this is, is the shape of the fluctuation. So this uh, isotropic uh, space is expanded this way or this way. And if the fluctuation is in the uh, isotropic radiation of photons. Let's assume this case. And if the space is distorted by fluctuation, uh, it creates a quarter pole temperature, <coughs> temperature distribution. So if the space is expanded like this, uh, they have two hot points and two cold points. So this become the quadrupole, local quadrupole temperature. And what if electrons are surrounded by such quadrupole? Uh, this is a figure created by Wayne Hu. Uh, so the photons are scattered by this electron with Thomson scattering. So the left to right photon is a, a high temperature photon. 
this two uh, lines show the linear polarization of horizontal and vertical. And if the photon is scattered by electron, one of the linear polarization is selected. And, and from top to bottom, this is a low temperature photon. So from here, one long uh, linear polarization is selected. From here, one horizontal small linear polarization is selected. In total, so nearly linearly polarized photon is uh, created with the scattering with electron. So then, yeah, from here to see the last scattered photon, the scattered photon has this green-like linear polarization from the fluctuation of space. So, so in the case of cosmic microwave background, so uh, in past, our universe is very hot and plasma state. Then the uh, universe expand, uh, the universe become colder. Then uh, protons and electrons had combined. So at the combination error, so-called uh, last scattering surface or recombination, the last scattering of photon was made. At that error, uh, photons are polarized from Thomson scattering, like this linear polarization. Then the photon travels our universe and we can observe the linearly polarized photons. And this is a, a linear polarization map created by ESA's Frank satellite. These black lines show the linear polarization pattern created by uh, the Thomson scattering. And that was created by the quadrupole uh, temperature distribution. And this red and blue uh, colors show the temperature anisotropy of cosmic microwave background. So how can we uh, measure the linear polarization patterns? So we use uh, two orthogonal parameters, Stokes Q and Stokes U. And <clears throat> Q means the uh, linear polarization is horizontal or vertical. U uh, means the uh, linear polarization is 45 degree cubed, or not, minus, or minus 45 degree cubed. For example, in this case, uh, this horizontal case, it, it means Q is negative and U is zero. This vertical uh, linear polarization shows Q is positive and U is zero, and this, uh, one shows Q is zero and U is negative. So this kind of photons, uh, uh, photons come to us and we detect with the detectors. So detectors have antennas to sense this type of linear polarization. So this one corresponds to positive Q and this one corresponds to ne uh, negative Q. And 45 degree tilted one uh, sends the positive U and negative U. Yeah, anyway, so the polarization is measured with two Stokes parameters. Yeah, these are the observed cosmic micro, uh, sorry, microwave sky signal by Planck 143 gigahertz detectors. Left hand side is the Stokes Q map and right hand side is Stokes U map. So from these two maps, we can construct all the linear polarization information from the sky. But yeah, this Stokes Q and Stokes U depends on the coordinate system. For example, if the, co the coordinate is rotated by 45 degree Q, 
uh, and use a uh, mixed, uh, are flipped. Mm. So to remove the dependence of uh, coordinate system, we usually use so-called E and B modes. These are the like uh, linear polarization in the Fourier space. We transform Q and U linear polarization uh, with trans uh, Fourier transform and create E and B modes. So what E and B uh, patterns means. So E mode is a case polarization directions are parallel or perpendicular to the wave number vector direction. And B mode uh, polarization means uh, the pol polarization directions are 45 or well, minus 45 degree tilted with regard to the wave number direction. So yeah, we use these rotation invariant E and B modes for the analysis of cosmic microwave background polarization. So then go back to the fluctuation. So the, we, I will show the uh, correspondence of the fluctuation and linear polarization pattern. This scalar type perturbation create density uh, fluctuation and finally create E mode. E mode is uh, uh, even parity pattern. And this tensor type perturbation creates primordial gravitational waves and some of them create the uh, parity even E mode. However, some of them create uh, parity odd B mode. They are totally different. Yeah. So we search for this uh, Kali B mode in the early, uh, in the CMB signal to test the inflation uh, theory. So B mode search is needed to determine the tensor to scalar ratio R. So there is also another source to create B mode that is lensing effect. After the last scattering, <coughs> the E-mode e e CMB signal uh, propagate to us. Then uh, the matter, for example, neutrinos and dark matters uh, distort the linear polarization uh, with gravitational effect, lensing effect, and create B-mode like signal. That is so called uh, weak lensing B mode. So, then how can we measure the <coughs> uh, B mode polarization? So, there are some, I put uh, some power spectra of cosmic microwave background. The top uh, distribution shows the temperature and isotropy. And this video one shows E mode power spectrum. This this uh, uh, oscillations in the early universe. And this black line shows that B mode mainly from lensing. Yeah, this two tells the truth. This dashed line shows the lensing B mode effect. And what about the primordial gravitational waves? So primordial P modes are like this thin solid line. In the case of R is 0.015. So this signal is not yet observed. So this is our target. Uh, here is a status of B mode power spectrum measurement. Uh, this figure is a little bit old. So uh, yeah, this is a power spectrum of B mode against the multiple moment L, yeah, wave number, uh, wave, wave number L. If L is larger, that means the B mode pattern is small. L, if L is small, then that means uh, the B mode pattern is very large. So yeah, top right, there are many uh, dots created by, by uh, ground-based measurement. So because on the ground, 
uh, we can only see part of the sky, so we can only see the part uh, high, sorry, small scale structure of B mode. However, the, we can create the large telescope. The res resolution is high, so we can see very high air region with ground-based measurement yeah, around there. And for the smaller L, the yeah, mid L region, balloon bone measurement can uh, observe the B mode and smaller L scale, uh, only satellite bone mission can observe the sky. However, yeah, anyway, just now, Plyvonel gravitational wave signal is not yet observed. So, and let me introduce the, some structures of B, primordial B mode. This blue dashed line shows a primordial B mode in the case of 0. Point, R is 0 0.01. And it has uh, two bumps in low L region, L less, less than 200. One is a deionization bump, which is created by in the era of deionization, which is after the recombination. And this is the second bump created in the recombination era and so-called recombination bump. So in, so in low L region, the primordial signal becomes higher so the measurement in low air region, that means uh, we need a uh, full sky observation with satellite is needed. Then, and uh, sorry, another advantage in the measurement from uh, satellite is that we can use uh, frequency band, uh, many, Frequency bumps. From the ground, some uh, CMB photons uh, can be absorbed, uh, some CMB photons are absorbed by molecular in the air. This is a absorption line, uh, absorption spectrum by the air. This is absorption by oxygen, and these are the absorption by water. Uh, absorption against the uh, uh, frequency. So ground-based measurement in past uh, put 95 gigahertz observation band. However, just now they prepared uh, 150 gigahertz and 270 gigahertz band. However, the measurement from ground was limited <coughs> by the uh, absorption by air. From the space, we don't have such limit, and we also don't have the atmospheric noise. So the observation of cosmic microwave background from the space is highly expected. Then comes light bird. Light bird means light satellite for the study of B mode polarization and deflation from cosmic background radiation detection. Uh, it was uh, selected as JAXA, Japanese Space Agency's large class mission in May 2019. And the expected launch is in late 2029 with JAXA's H3 rocket, which is a new model of rocket of JAXA. And we plan to sky all sky with three years observation from Sun as Lagrangian point two. We prepare, we are preparing large frequency coverage from 40 gigahertz to 400 gigahertz with 15 bands. 
at 70 to 18 arc minutes angular res resolution for precision measurements of the CMPB model. And final combined sensitivity is 2.2 microkelvin arc minutes. Yeah, here's a scan strategy of Lightbird. Uh, Lightbird would be uh, will be launched from the Earth and go to uh, Sun as Lagrangian point two, which would be uh, far away from the Earth, about one hundred fifty thousand kilometers. Yeah, and. <clears throat> Uh, and the spin axis is, uh, oh, sorry, the precession angle is 45 degree and spin ax, uh, angle is 50 degree. So light about scan the sky around the spin axis uh, with the peri period of 20 minutes. And also the spin axis uh, rotate around uh, precession uh, with precession uh, with precession. So precession period is three point two hour. So in total, so right about scan the sky like like this. In total, with three years of uh, survey, <clears throat> right about see the full sky like this. Uh, this is a heat map. So how many times light bulb see the see each sky pixel? So this is a very intense point, and this is not so intense point. However, light bulb can uh, survey all the sky with three year survey. And light bulb's uh, main scientific objects are here. It's uh, target is a B-mod signal from cosmic inflation to make a discovery or ruling out well-motivated inflationary models and, and to give uh, insight into the quantum nature of gravity. So this, uh, this black dot shows the <clears throat> expected observed point by light bulb. This is the case for E mode power spectrum, and these are for B mode. And this line shows the case of R is 10 to minus 2. Right, but can uh, precisely measure this B mode power spectrum. So, as I presented, the inflationary B mode power is proportional to the tensor to scalar ratio R, and the current. Best constraint is R less than 0.032. Right, but we improve current sensitivity on R by uh, a factor of 50. And right, but uh, level one requirements, the top requirements uh, are here. For input R is zero, case total uncertainty should be less than 0 0.001. And for input R 0, 0, 0 0.01 case, five signal detection of the reionization bump and the recombination bump independently. If they, if light bulb observed such signal, it would give a huge discovery impact. Uh, for example, evidence for inflation and knowledge of its energy scale. Uh, may I ask, sorry? Yes. Um, yes. In the bottom line, the, maybe this is a B mode, expected B mode when R equal to 10 to the minus two. Yes. And uh, it, the right bulb data, expected data is shown with the error by black line, a uh, black dotted, Black dot, you know. Yeah, black dots. Yeah. Why Frank the blue point by Frank are not shown? Sorry? Uh, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Why? Uh, I'm wondering the Planck data can search that this r equal 10 to the minus 2 because no dotted by Planck satellite. Uh, Planck, Planck, Planck. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, because mm. we only put the observed B mode. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, Planck did not observe the B mm -hmm. mode. So they give a uh, uh, lower bound, lower bound. They gave only mm. a lower bound. So mm. we don't put uh, the result from Planck. Oh. So right bound is uh, 2000, launched at 2029. 29, yes. Ah, so, ah. I see. So that the, for Planck, they consider the all the used the observed data for Planck. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, I see. Thank you very much. So yeah, their points. I'm not sure the their points would be like around here, and oh. that is uh, that has large error. So the mm. observed dot is consistent mm. with zero. Ah, yeah. So we oh, don't. Oh, mm. So that only gives a uh, mm. low, mm, lower, uh, upper bound. Mm. Ah, yeah. Upper uh, bound. Mm. Uh, upper bound. Mm. Yeah, only give yeah, upper, a bound, upper, bound upper bound. Yeah, upper bound. On the B model mm. power spectrum. So ah. I we don't put such mm. dots. Oh, but how about the, for example, 2029 or future Planck situation? I'm not sure. Oh, no, 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 no. Planck stopped <laughs> observation in 2013. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, because Planck used open cycle dilution, which uh, emits a uh, helium gas outside the satellite to cool down the detectors. So if the helium gas is exhausted, they can't cool down the detectors. So they stopped the observation. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. I have also one question. What's the yes. bump in the E mode uh, and the lower multiple? Is it also due to reionization? It's a bump in the E mode. Ah, yeah, 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 yes. So this is, if this is uh, due to reionization, does that mm -hmm. mean Planck already detected the inflation? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, so, to tell the truth, yeah, this reionization is not from the not from the primordial gravitational wave. Oh, okay. Usual okay. E mode can be affected by reionization and would be larger. Okay, okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay. Can so, I also make one question? Yes, yes. Uh, how light water experimental results may is, may give some insight to, about the quantum nature of gravity? Is there some expectation? Or... Uh, so we expect that the quantum fluctuation during the inflation creates a primordial gravitational wave, assuming some Gaussianity. So if the, for example, if the fluctuation is not does not follow uh, Gaussianity, uh, maybe the power spectrum would be distorted or can be tested with as a four point cross uh, correlation, B, 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 yeah, try, try by spectrum, no, sorry, uh, but, uh, sorry, by spectrum is B, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is a B, B power spectrum, but if we see BBB three point cross correlation, we can test the uh, fluctuation is created by Gaussian Gaussianity or non Gaussianity. 
that would reveal the uh, behavior of quantum fluctu uh, gravity. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Welcome. And so to realize this observation, we write about joint study group working on from uh, working on development of detectors and some apparatus. So over 300 researchers from Japan, North America, and Europe uh, are joining right about JSG. Uh, the, this is a picture uh, took in 2019 before COVID uh, pandemic. So I'm here next to Masashi. He's a leader of Lightbot project. I'm here. And yeah, some members are from CMB experiments, but many, they have many origin. One is X-ray satellite and other large projects such as ALMA and high energy physics experiments. So let me introduce, uh, from here, let me introduce some uh, satellite and detectors of light bulb. This is a light bulb satellite. These are the uh, bus module and this is a payload module. In payload module, there are three telescopes low frequency telescope, high frequency telescope, and mid frequency telescope. So we have three telescopes. It, all the telescopes have, uh, have uh, multi-chronic transition edge sensors, TES, barometer arrays, cool down to 100 mK. So TES is a superconducting uh, detector, very sensitive and very, uh, it has very SN SN ratio. And all the telescopes uh, have polarization modulation unit, PMU, uh, with rotating half-wave plate to reduce the one nova F noise and the systematic uncertainty. And all the optics are cooled down to five Kelvin. In total, all the mass is expected to be 2.6 ton and electric power is 3.0 kilowatt, which is produced by this solar panel on the other side. And data size is 17.9 gigabit per day. So, Let's go into the details of telescopes. This is the shape of te low frequency telescope, LFT. Uh, from the top, uh, it has PMU as a fast sky side optical element, PMU. And the incoming uh, photons are reflected twice, one, two, and then going to focal plane detectors. So this is so-called crossed dragon design with two mirrors. And mirrors and aperture stop uh, are set to five Kelvin. And these focal plane detectors are cooled down to 100 mK. And these are the high frequency telescopes and mid frequency telescope. This is a high HFT and MFT. These are different from LFT, uh, which have diffractive, uh, these telescopes have diffractive optics. So instead of cross the dragon, they have lens to lens to focus the incoming CMB light to the detectors at the focal plane. Hmm. And they uh, have about 4,500 of superconducting detectors. For LFT case, they, they, uh, it has this kind of sinuous antenna. This is an antenna, and 
the incoming CMB photons are captured by this antenna and the signal was transported to these, uh, these TS bolometer and the signal was sensed by bolometers. MFT and HFT case, the TS bolometers are like this. And these are antenna and TS bolometers are surrounded, uh, are installed around the antenna. LFT covers the frequency from 40 to 140 gigahertz. MFT covers from 100 to 195 gigahertz. And HFT covers 195 to 402 gigahertz bands. In total, they have 22 bands, including overlaps. Removing overlaps, they have 15 bands. So using, uh, thanks to the many frequency bands, these are the sensitivities, sensitivity bands in frequency space. The sensitivity of low frequency tele telescope are here, and mid frequencies are here, and that of HFTs are here. So, uh, in the observation of CMB, there are two uh, major foreground emission, linear polarized uh, foreground emission. One is synchrotron, which is dominant in low frequency region. It has this kind of uh, frequency dependence. So using observation with some low frequency telescopes, we can remove this synchrotron using its frequency dependence. And thermal dust emission is dominant in high frequency region. So if we uh, use HFT and some of MFT, we can remove dust uh, polarization. So combining these uh, sensitivities of all bands, uh, we, we can achieve uh, two uh, sensitivity to primordial CMB anisotropies in 2.2 microkelvin arc minutes. And yeah, telescopes are cooled down uh, with refrigerators. This is a, uh, sorry, it is very hard to see. Yeah, this is a Jules Thomson refrigerator tested in France. So anyway, yeah, the Mirrors are cooled down, uh, sorry, telescopes are at first cooled down by uh, V groups. They use a, a radiation effect to cool down the object. The, the up, outermost one is 160 Kelvin and next is 90 Kelvin and the third is 30 Kelvin. From that, uh, the structures are cooled down to 20 Kelvin or 15 Kelvin by uh, pulse tube uh, refrigerator. And after that, from 5K, Jill Thompson refrigerator cooled down the object to uh, 1.75K. And after that, ADR, adiabatic demagnetization refrigerator cooled down the focal plane detectors to 0 0.1 kilobit. Yeah, so cooling down is very uh, important to use the superconducting detectors. And we have many uh, detectors, more than 4,000. So we use a highly mul multiplexing readout technology to read out such large number of TS bolometers. So we prepare this kind of uh, cone in frequency space to read out each detector by each cone. And we can read these uh, many detectors at once with a multiplexing system. And the signal is amplified by squid amplifier and transfer, 
word to FPGA readout system. And let me talk about the polarization modulation unit. So, sorry, this is uh, installed outermost of the telescopes here, here, and here, here, which modulate the linear polarization uh, with rotated half wave plate. So, half wave plate uh, using the biofringent, uh, the linear polarization is uh, rotated by uh, four theta. Theta is the difference between the polarization angle and the uh, bifurcated axis. If the axis is uh, theta, then the linear polarization is rotated by four theta. So it modulate, uh, sorry, before the modulation, uh, the we have we are suffered from one no wave noise, which uh, appear in low frequency region. So this is a target linear polarized signal. However, one over f is uh, much larger, so we cannot observe this signal. However, thanks to a half wave rate polarization modulation unit, we can up convert this linear polarization to higher frequency. Then observe the linear polarization and demodulate the signal to the correct position. And we can observe the, uh, this green demodulated signal. This is a test uh, instrument of uh, the paid halfway plate. Can you see this rotating halfway plate? So the rotating uh, halfway plate is cooled down to 4 Kelvin. And that is very important to realize the uh, uh, low noise observation of B mode. I missed the, uh, I missed the, this is um, the, related to the, maybe the page 32, the two mirror. I, I missed something. There's no, 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 no. A, uh, this is not related to, I think. Uh, <laughs> the PMU <laughs> is installed at the top. Oh, I see. So incoming light, linearly mm -hmm. polarized light is kept mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. modulated by uh, uh, half wave plate. And after that, the photon is reflected oh. twice and going to mm -hmm. focal plate. And the oh. HFT case, yeah, that is mm -hmm. at the outermost uh, place. Mm -hmm. By the way, why 32 pages there is a two mirror not directly detected by the focal plane? Uh, because yeah, mm. it, it, for low frequencies, the mm. wave uh, mm. wavelength is very large. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. So the telescope mm. be, have to become very large because wavelength is mm. large. Mm. Right, right. So to uh, to make the system compact, we used mm. Uh, mm. this cross the dragon shape. Oh, I see. To make a compact, I see. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. maybe. So, oh. Yes. I see. Oh. For, yeah, oh. for example, for low frequency case, mm. if we use this refractive shape, that mm. should become this kind of size. Oh, more directly, just nice. Yeah, because mm. the wavelength is uh, mm. large, mm. so the wave size is very large, so the shape becomes much larger. Mm. I see, thank you very much. And because not one mirror, but two mirror, because uh, one mirror makes the uh, parity inverted, so that two mirror parity inverted two times, then no effect, no no effect on the polarization, maybe. Yes, that is one of the reasons. And another reason is that that would reduce the systematic uh, effect mm. in the that would created by the reflection. Oh. Oh. Yeah, some systematics uh, 
removed by the deflection twice. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And yeah, I came here. Yeah, sorry. Then I will talk about the analysis. So as I said, there are two dominant foreground emission, which disturb the observation of CMB. In low frequency region, there is synchrotron radiation, uh, which is, uh, but yeah, we assume a curved spectrum. Uh, frequency depends on this kind of parameters. <coughs> to remove the synchrotron signal. And about the modified black body, uh, sorry, thermal dust emission, we assume modified black body uh, shape to remove the signal. So in total, we need, eight, we need to determine eight parameters in each sky patch. So in each sky patch, we need eight parameters and we have to divide the other sky to multi-patch. So it was called multi-patch technique. So in the case, we divide the sky with 12 times uh, inside is eight, eight square patches. We need, uh, we use uh, six, about 6,000 parameters to remove foreground signal. And after the removal of foreground signal, uh, we expect uh, observed uh, band should be like this. And this gray band shows the uh, error from the cosmic variance. And the red band show, shows the errors, including the as a systematic effect in systematic errors of light bulb instrument. And after the foreground removal, there should a residual of foreground signal. The expected residual is plotted in this uh, dashed line, and that is very small compared to the uh, primordial B mode signal. So that is uh, enough small. And with multi-patch technique, uh, this is a, a histogram uh, of our uh, simulated uh, with, from 1,000 simulations with input R is zero. And the widest means uh, uh, Fisher uncertainty, uh, Fisher sigma on the R, measurement of R. And this is uh, expected uh, Fisher, Fisher error, and the blue line includes uh, uh, including the foreground residual bias. So including such bias, the total error is six times 10 to minus four, and that meets the requirement. In R equals zero case, the requirement is one to, uh, 10 to minus three. So this is small enough. And so Lightbot can produce other science outcomes. Yeah, because uh, uh, even though its target is the tensor to scalar ratio R in the measurement of B mode, meeting such sensitivity requirements would allow us to address other important scientific topics, uh, such as uh, the, as I said, the non gaussianity of the fluctuation and parity violation or something. And measurement of uh, power spectrum features in polarization especially E-mode, also gives uh, information on the deionization. So that would improve the uncertainty on optical depths, uh, like uh, optical depths to the deionization error, 
by a factor of three. So plant case, the uncertainty is like this. With light bulb, we can reduce the uncertainty to around here. We can reduce the uncertainty by a factor of three. So thanks to the improvement of uh, reducing uh, uncertainty on optical depths, we can reduce the uncertainty on the measurement of uh, some of neutrino masses. Because in the sum of neutrino masses can be observed with uh, measurement of large scale structure. However, the parameter is degenerated with optical depth. So thanks to light bulb, we can reduce the uncertainty on uh, tau. Then uh, finally, the uncertainty on sum of neutrino masses uh, should be small about 15 milli electron volt. Without light bulb, the uncertainty is like this. And light bulb also can give a constraint on cosmic bioflingence and near F zero beach effect and can elucidate anomalies such as H naught. And also give a information on galactic science. So, Thanks to multi-chronic multi-frequency measurement, we can characterize the foreground spectral energy distribution. And we can test the, we can measure the large scale galactic magnetic field and we can model the dust polarization model. And here today, yeah, let me uh, finally let me talk about the cosmic bioflingence. Cosmic bioflingence is uh, like the universe filled with a bioflingent material. Uh, if the universe is filled with a pseudo scalar field phi coupled to the electromagnetic tensor via a Chan Simons coupling here, in addition to the usual Lagrangian density. Uh, this is a coupling constant G phi gamma, pseudo scalar field phi electromagnetic tensor F and its dual. This is a new term called Chan Simon's term. If this term exists, the linear polarization uh, plane is rotated when photons travel the universe. The rotation angle beta can be related to this coupling constant, G phi gamma over two times uh, the difference of field values, uh, field values of pseudo scalar field, uh, field value difference between observer point and emission point. The field value difference creates this rotation beta. And the beta, non zero beta, was found uh, maybe two, two years ago. Yeah by Minami and Komatsu. And the observed beta is 0 0.35 plus minus 0 0.14 degree. It, it, it corresponds to 2.4 sigma, not so uh, strong uh, signal. It's weak hint. But the weak hint was found in Planck data. So the method used in the measurement is uh, here. So past measurement were uh, limited by the systematic uncertainty of the miscalibration angles of detectors. Let's assume the uh, linear uh, the detectors uh, detectors with the sense which sense the uh, polarization direction are installed on the focal plane. So this detector sends this linear polarization and this uh, detector sense this polarization direction. However, if there is a miscalibration, so for example, by mistake or something, the detectors are rotated, then uh, they are rotated uh, by angle alpha, but we don't know it. So if there is a rotation angle alpha, we can only measure the sum alpha plus beta. So a new method 
which uses galactic foreground to determine alpha, was developed and applied to Planck data, and they found 2.4 sigma hint. Yeah, of course, we can apply the method to Lightbird. Uh, because Lightbird uh, is expected to have smaller noise level, so the observation can push the hint over four sigma. With simulations, uh, the uncertainty on beta should be 0 0.1 degree, uh, which was shown in uh, paper Minami and Komatsu 2028. Let me summarize. So Lightbird is the next generation satellite mission on the measurement of cosmic microwave background polarization. With three years of observation, we target to meet the requirement for input R is zero case, total uncertainty of delta R to be uh, less than 10 to minus three. For R is 0 0.01 case, five sigma direction of the reionization and recombination peaks independently. And we can also address other scientific outcomes. One example is cosmic biofringence. Right part can push the hint over four sigma. Please stay tuned. That's all. Thank you very much for a clear and interesting talk. Uh, any question or comments to Dr. Minami? Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a uh, uh, couple of questions on the detector side. So yes, you, okay. you are detecting the CMB photons mm -hmm. with the ES sensor. Uh, yeah. Then you sh shouldn't you have some kind of uh, absorber? Because TES sensor is a temperature sensor, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. So the uh, the ele electric signal was transformed to uh, the with these lines and transform uh, ported to this uh, side, and there is a Register, resistance, or some heat to create the heat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the heat was uh, absorbed by, uh, I forgot, yeah, in past it was planned to use palladium or gold. Gold oh, part or palladium part was used to absorb the heat. And Oh, then I see. finally, transition is sense the heat. Sense the heat. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. Uh, the other question I had was the cryogenics. Uh, how how much uh, did you test the cryogenics at this point? Is it is it stable to be sent to outer space? These. Uh, uh, so yeah, these cryogenics is very complicated <laughs> things, and then it's very sensitive to vibrations, for example. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So for what for two or three months, uh, I went to France and test the uh, some of refrigerators with some mm -hmm. heat input and vibration, and. In addition to that, each refrigerator is uh, under test of uh, long period run okay. running. Yeah. In but each component, yeah, each component was test. Uh, uh, each component is in uh, uh, is uh, uh, under is in test of yeah long periods test mm. okay yeah thank you very much yeah look forward to seeing the success in the future yeah 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Any other question or comment? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, thank you for your nice talk. Uh, actually, uh, at the time of Bicep 2 in 2014, there was an issue yeah. on uh, dust, I mean, the foreground background, which was not yeah. understood well. So my question is about uh, the current status of this uh, foreground. Uh, is it uh, mostly from Planck dust map or is there any room for improvement in the future or so? Uh, yeah, yeah, so light but it also has many frequency but in high frequency regions. Mm. So we can see, observe the dust emission precisely. Yeah, so that would improve the measurement of dust polarization. Mm -hmm. And except for that, yeah, I've heard there is a plan to observe very high frequency regions from the ground. The project name is CCAT Prime. Maybe the US team and Germany team plan to install the uh, telescope on the mountain in Chile to observe high frequency region to precisely measure the summer dust emission. Mm. That would, yeah, also help our analysis. Mm -hmm. But present, mm -hmm. at present, that information is not considered to prospect, to, to give a prospect of light body. Mm. I see. Mm. And also, and the, although you are, um, the aim of light, light body is to measure the tens to, tens to scalar ratio, uh, yeah. You have a, can you make a comment on the, on the spectral index side? I mean, the, whether you could have some improvement in the measurement of the spectral index for the scalar. Uh, ah, yeah. Region. Yeah, this is a case for the, for R, what R is zero, then, the, but um, in the case, uh, in that case, we can constrain NOS in this region. So uh, if, if R is zero, we can constrain NS. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And with some observed case, with some models, yeah, mm -hmm. we assume some Starobinsky-like model, yeah, mm -hmm. we can give a value of NS around mm -hmm. here. Mm. This is a case for R is 0 0.00, oh, sorry, 0 0.005. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I see. Okay. And also, you, you said also about non Gaussian, it may be this, this is the last question. Uh, you, you may have sensitivity mm -hmm. to the non Gaussianity. Uh, so then uh, I think the currently we haven't found non the signal non Gaussian ET signal yet. Uh, yeah. So what is the, I mean, I mean, it could be primordial. I mean, for, during inflation, uh, it could be mm -hmm. uh, produced um, after inflation. And, and I think uh, then there, there, there should be some un, uh, red, uh, irreducible uncertainty uh, in the non Gaussianity uh, signal. So I don't know uh, the, to what extent uh, you could be uh, sensitive to uh, the primordial uh, uh, non Gaussianity. Uh, so at present, we, I think I, we don't have uh, the prospects for the non Gaussianity. Mm. However, just now, yeah, after the, after the, uh, publish of this paper using the parameters used in this paper, we maybe some of uh, small groups uh, try to produce the sensitivity to non Gaussianity. So we are now working on mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Yeah, anyway, I've heard uh, some theorists already have wrote papers uh, on the, the measurement of non-Gaussianity with light bird in past, but with old light bird parameters, which is not uh, equal to the present uh, specification. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, I have another question. Sorry, uh, uh, you have. Yeah. I think the light bulb experiment is a very promising experiment, and mm -hmm. I think that I'm looking forward to this. But the you have make a comment on this uh, other CMB experiment. I mean, which are uh, competitive to this uh, type of experiment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so maybe. Your light bulb expect to uh, sorry. Uh, just a moment. Mm. Uh, just a second. Okay, and yes. Uh, around 2029, uh, there will be the observation by CMB S4 led by the US, and they can measure the uh, B mode very precisely from the ground, from the ground. But so from the ground, they can only see high L region. So yeah, maybe perhaps they can. Uh, discover the primordial B mode around here. However, the yeah primordial B mode have this uh, feature in low L region, uh, ionization bump and recombination bump. So that they are uh, they are needed to determine that the signal is. Uh, truly from the primordial gravitational waves. So anyway, measurement in low L would give us a uh, knowledge of its uh, origin of fat time of the initial power spectrum of primordial gravitational wave. Mm -hmm. If, if so, even after the measurement of CMBS4, yeah, right about itself have uh, important uh, load to reveal our universe. Mm. I see. Okay. So maybe CMB, CMB at S4, uh, I mean, the future mm -hmm. CMB experiment, if it is approved, probably. Uh, it's more comprehensive. Uh, I mean, the, the next generation uh, CMB experiment mm -hmm. after Planck. Planck. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I hope that uh, I think that if once you discover <laughs> the tends to scalar ratio in the, in the light bulb, then uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, yeah. it'll be interesting. The, I mean, the not only uh, tends to scalar ratio, but also. Uh, spectral index. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice in the sub T, yes. Right, right, yeah. We need the both. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's right. okay. okay. Thank you. Maybe related to Hyun Min's question. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have a severe competition with the bicep 2 CAC around recombination bump. Yeah. If BICEP2 collect 10 years of more data, mm -hmm. could they reduce their uncertainty so that they can claim the recombination bump? Uh, yeah, however, anyway, yeah, this region is dominated by lensing B mode. If R is that yeah, maybe they can observe the primordial B mode. If they correctly remove the lensing B mode. 
Yeah, however, yeah, bicep team is now running or preparing the bicep three project. Mm -hmm. And after that, they plan to bicep array. So put the uh, maybe two or three arrays of bicep telescope to improve the sensitivity. Yeah, after that, yeah, that is very, uh, that project would have very uh, power to determine, uh, to discover R, smaller R. Is there any special uh, character on the recombination, re reionization bump? So if you if you see if if bicep sees the recombination bump, but yes. still the reionization bump is interesting. Whether oh, that, yes, yeah. I don't know any argument uh, on this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the air dependence it, it itself is important oh, to I see, reveal I see. the behavior of the B mode spectrum. Mm -hmm. So maybe around here, biceps can only see uh, air being around here or here as a minimum. So they cannot go to lower air. So okay. they cannot see this uh, L dependence. Mm -hmm. So that is also important to reveal the uh, structure of primordial gravitational waves. Okay. Thanks. Uh, may I ask one question? The if yes. parity is violated, the cosmic bio by refringence happens. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is um, make the correlation of the E mode and the B mode. Yes, mm. that co correlate E and B mode. Yes. Oh, uh, so is so then the, this signal can be changed. For example, B B premodal. Ah uh, yes 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 yes. Mm. Oh. Uh, just a moment. Yeah, I will show the figure. The figure is on the uh, our new paper. I I created the uh, our spectrum and the mm. okay. okay, just a moment. So this is a uh, so this blue lines show the power spectrum uh, created by cosmic bifringence. B mode created yes. by cosmic bifringence. So the yeah, bifringence creates uh, the B mode from E mode. However, the mm. coefficient is very small, so that only create weak B mode signal. Oh. However, in high L region, the signal is very strong. Mm. Oh. And this is a case yeah. of the right about error bars with the mm. R is 0.002 or something. Mm -hmm. So in high L region, we can distinguish mm. the signal is from uh, oh. cosmic bifringence or uh, a primordial gravitational waves. Oh, mm. so, so this is so... The shape is the different, <laughs> completely different. The shape from, is different. So from the primordial, right? Mm. Gravity waves. This is a primordial line, and this is a, uh, from cosmic bifringence. Mm. If the cosmic bifringence is the case, yeah, we need to detail the shape uh, dependence on L to distinguish the B mode signal is from uh, primordial B mode or cosmic bifringence. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm.
So around L equal to 20 or something. Yes. So, oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, the signal is too small for a bifringian signal. Maybe this is. Oh, uh, yes. Hmm. This is a difference even if error bars, but the signal itself is too small for a blue line. Ah, yes, this is too small to I detect. Oh. So maybe for bioflinge, CMBS4 can help for this, for large L. Uh, large L? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, this is a B mode. Mm -hmm. A measurement mm -hmm. of B mode. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, in the measurement of E B cross correlation, CMBS4 can also help. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the measurement of mm -hmm. bifringence is mm -hmm. uh, maybe especially, but um, uh, I mean that depend uh, that measure the parity violation. So ground based measurement only observe the partial sky. Yes. So the parity can be broken mm -hmm. because of partial sky observation. <laughs> so <laughs> the parity can be broken mm -hmm. in loci by observing a small patch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, yeah, if they can see only the CMP signal, yeah, they can test the cosmic bifringence from uh, also CMP S4. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So almost the time, any two, one or two questions from audience, Ajahn, one or two questions? So if you no, know, let's thank Dr. Minami again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your nice talk. I also thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you.